for us. That was a code switch to Pega Canyon Beach. He's better known as Mitch Buchanan, the clean living lifeguard who makes at least one rescue per episode in the smash hit series Baywatch. But away from the cameras, David Hasselhoff's private life has taken a beating. Today he took the opportunity to set the rumours straight. I'm uh, reading on the newspaper, it says David Hasselhoff has a monster ego and is a sex addict. How, how would you like to read that in the, on the, in the airplane? You know? It's completely irresponsible journalism. And the, and the, the Sunday Mirror was equally as bad and really upset my wife. I think sometimes the press think that that's the price you pay for being a high profile. No, that's the price that some idiot reporter pays because he's a frustrated person who's sitting in his little room and wants to sell papers, isn't it? But David's in London not to have a showdown with the press, but to promote his new single, If I Could Only Say Goodbye. He swapped his swim trunks for the standard rock and roll black denim to sing the ballad from where else but a beach. It all started with a frustrated attempt to get to Broadway and ended up a pop career. And it's gotten so big and I've been able to incorporate all of the creative feelings that I would get, like if I was doing Les Miserables or a play, into my act, kind of like a male Liza Minnelli, so to speak. You know? So does singing come naturally to you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a gift. I mean, I think you have to have some sort of talent, don't you? If you're a golfer or you're a football star or whatever, you have to have some sort of inbred talent from God. And, and you just have to develop that. And I've developed it through years and years and years and years and years of singing lessons. I still take singing lessons. But while David sings about goodbyes, he says he's not about to say farewell to Baywatch. Well, I'll be with Baywatch as long as Baywatch is around. Baywatch will be here for at least two more years, could be here for more. It all depends on, on financially what happens in the fifth season. Surprisingly, David says he still feels embarrassed about having to strip down. I'm very self-conscious about wearing a bathing suit. I mean, I hate wearing a bathing suit. I'd rather wear clothes. <laughs> How comfortable are you with the sex symbol tag? It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just kind of a, kind of a, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> if you'd like to see more of David, you can catch him at Planet Hollywood tomorrow night for the launch of his new single. In Park Lane, this is Rachel Friend for London Tonight. and gentlemen, Judy Spires. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to the show. Today I am joined by an interesting couple. The lady of the household believes that a home is where candlelit suppers can be held with confidence and that her husband's function is to clean the car and drive. Can't argue with that. I'm talking, of course, Hyacinth and Richard Bouquet, Patricia Routledge and Clive Swift. Another of my guests would have made short work of Hyacinth. He'd simply have made her disappear. That's Paul Daniels. And finally, there's chat and music from the man who gave me my big break in America, a six-second role in Baywatch, David Hasselhoff. Okay, Judy, this is your big scene. Here we go. This is it, Judy. Okay, it's your time. Okay. Action! <laughs> Just sign here. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. That's my receipt. Darling, you send me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who made it all possible, David Hasselhoff. That's the first time I saw that. So I you have to great. say to you, though, why did you cut? You cut out the bit where I run up the beach in a thong, drag you out the water and give you mouth to mouth. Why did you cut that? Well, the, the show's only an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for that. I promise you, you will never have to see that again because I've driven them mad in this country. 
every time there's a mention of Baywatch, right. we show that clip. So I had not totally forgotten about that, but it was a very funny day. My you, big moment. She forgotten. was very lovely on the set that day. We had I'm a good time. Good, I'm good. Now listen, we're hearing lots of things in the paper at the moment. Is it over? Are you, have you had enough of it? Are the, what's happening? No, no, that's another one of the real yeah. things that you can trust the newspapers to print. Um, it is absolutely untrue. Uh, Baywatch now has become the number one watched show in the world, and I will never ever walk away from that. So we are here for at least two more years, and I hope that we'll go on three or four. I, I hope to become the oldest lifeguard <laughs> in, in the world. <laughs> I think we all hope you do as well. <laughs> now, some nice stuff in the paper yesterday. I don't know a lot about it. Or today, was it that you rescued somebody? Unbelievable. I was doing this interview with this lady in the car, and she said, well, how do you act in, in real emergencies? And I said, well, I've had a few in, in my life, and I'm, I'm pretty calm. And all of a sudden, as I said this, a man was hit on his motorcycle right in front of me. Boom! And he flew over the car. I mean, the exact time I was doing this interview, and I went, stop the car. We went out, and the guy was pretty well shook up. I hope you are okay, wherever you are. And uh, he was pretty much in shock. And we stopped the traffic, and... I think Hyde Park Corner, is that what yeah, it's called? Yeah. There's four lanes of traffic, and I got up and I said, stop. And they all did. <laughs> and, and they were looking at me like, like, like dogs, looking you know, like this guy. Is that the man from Baywatch you know, in their car? What's he doing in the middle of Hyde Park Corner? So we stopped. They all stopped. That is and I picked the man up, and we got him across, and my limousine driver, Malcolm, got the bike out, and I said, go. And they went, okay. That is and they real went. Night it was, it was, stuff, isn't it? Well, the guy was okay, and, uh, you know, he called in. And, uh, but the most amazing thing that I must tell you, the guy had a cigarette in his mouth. Yeah. And he yeah. never let the cigarette out of his mouth. <laughs> he flew over the car, hit the ground, got up, says, oh, is in shock. And, but he's still smoking. So it is hazardous to your health. Yes, yes. Please don't try this at home. Now, another nice rumor is that you might be doing a musical in this country. Is that right? Yeah, well, I've been talking to Robert McIntosh, who's Cameron McIntosh's brother. And, and they actually came and saw me in Germany perform, where I've sold four million records. Yeah. And my dream was to do a West End musical. And we're in negotiations now for, for to open something maybe in about a year's time. Any, I mean, you're, you're too tall, physically too big for, for Joseph, and, and yeah. a couple, couple of years maybe too old, but right. what, what kind of thing do you fancy? Well, we've been talking about um, <laughs> the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, I can't see you in a frock. <laughs> You've got to wear stockings and makeup. I know, I, uh, <laughs> I know. that's why we're just talking about this. Okay, I was Although the role is great, and um, there was talk of Seven Brides or Seven Brothers, but we're actually developing something very brand new, which okay. I'm very excited about it, where I get to pay kind of a swashbuckling singing hero. Oh, right, and Errol Flynn, because didn't I say to you when we filmed, right. I mean, a lot of people have remarked on your similarity when you've got a moustache. very first role Errol I got, Flynn. I actually came in and, and told them that I was Errol Flynn's nephew, and I lied and it worked. <laughs> Shall I try that? Yes. Quite well like that. <laughs> All actors lie. Now, you've, you really want to crack it in this country, right. the music scene. As you say, you've, you're phenomenally big in Germany. I mean, you were there when the, when the wall came down, weren't right. you? Right, I sang on the Berlin Wall on New Year's Eve to 500,000 people. It was quite amazing because my single was called Looking for Freedom, so it kind of became a little bit of the anthem that year. Yeah. But it's important now for me to come here. My music's always been very German and produced by a very famous German producer. So I came up and hired a couple of guys who were on my keyboards over here, the Fallon Twins, yeah. and they, have, uh, with a, an American writer named James Berry, have written a very big power ballad, which is something that I've always wanted to do. And so I said, what a better way to try to break this market here than to go with UK producers and go with their sound. And we premiered it on top of the Pops the other night, and we're off to a How did that start. feel? Was it good? It was really good because, you know, usually you, you lip sync on these shows, mm -hmm. and this was absolutely live, and so it's difficult to get the mix in the studio yeah. with what goes out. And, and um, we, we pulled it off. I thought, I thought it came off okay. You recorded over here. You recorded it over here in this country. Right. We recorded it in a little farmhouse in Brighton. And, uh, um, 
with ducks and geese running around outside. It was very bizarre. I'd be singing as a whole. What is that? You know. But um, I wanted to mention one thing before I forget it. Yeah. And tomorrow I'm going to be at Planet Hollywood, and I wanted to invite everybody to come out to say hello. I'll be there between 6:30 and 9. Oh my lord! And just come on by. I've got autograph cards and uh, CDs and cassettes. And my dream was to come back here and to premiere my record there. And Planet Hollywood's been good enough to let me do it. So if you want to come down and say hi, uh, we'll be there. Oh, it's going to be absolutely mob now, isn't so. it? Now, you're going to sing your latest song for right. us called? If, if I Could Only Say Goodbye. <laughs> if only I could, David. <laughs> Would you like to make your way? She's an actress. <laughs> hey, she's a natural. <laughs> I'm going for another part. <laughs> Would you like to make your way over and join the band? Ladies right. and gentlemen, David Hasselhoff. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. Thank you.
put it down to jet lag, but David's actually at Planet Hollywood tonight. That's all for today. Thanks to all my guests. Ross is here tomorrow with Beverly Craven, John Malters, comedian George Marshall. I will be back on Friday. I'll see you then. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>